Welcome to NMH at One on Wednesday, the 7th of October, 2020. I am your host, Priska Nyolo, and thank you so much for joining us today. So we would like you to stay tuned for news from Balthus Bay and Vintuk reporting on crime, tourism and small business development. And moving on to win to well to win today's holiday discount voucher, which is worth a thousand million dollars, do answer the following question on screen or under the comments. So the question goes as follows: Which desert lies to the east of Namibia? So if you answer that question correctly, your voucher can be redeemed at the Namibia Tourism Expo, which will take place from the 4th to the 7th of November at the SKW in the capital city. So before we share our journalist contributions, we will take a look at your COVID-19 monitor for today. So last week, nine additional healthcare workers tested positive for the coronavirus, bringing the national total to 464. All new cases were reported from the first and second epicenters of local transmission. In Commerce Region, four new healthcare workers were infected and five in Irongo. By Monday, less than 2,000 of Namibia's confirmed cases were still in isolation, with a recovery rate of 82%. Vintuk makes up 1,292 of remaining active cases. Other larger groups of active cases are located in the Oshikocha region with 247 people in isolation, Hardap with 100 and Rundu with 93. Irongo and Oshodonjuba each had 47 active cases. In Kunene and Omusati, all patients have recovered. Health authorities will announce data for Tuesday this afternoon. So since late yesterday, Namibia is abuzz with the news that the remains of a woman that has been missing for almost five months have apparently been found at Valfus Bay. The police must, however, still with forensics, confirm whether the remains actually belong to 22-year-old Shannon Vassaval. Leandria Lowe of our Irongo team reports from Valfus Bay. This is the place where human remains were discovered um, yesterday afternoon around 3 o'clock according to the Irongo Regional Police. According to the clothes found here at the scene or in this very shallow grave, um, it looks like it's um, the remains of Shannon Wasserfall, 22 years old, who went missing here in Warfish Bay in April 2020. This is the shallow grave that she was found in. The police are currently busy now um, with DNA to determine if it is if it is her. An anonymous tip came through um, yesterday afternoon, telling the police where exactly to find the body. And now moving on to the next story, restarting the tourism sector in spite of the worldwide COVID-19 pandemic is essential in many countries. Since borders have been reopened, foreign tourists have been arriving, but at trickling volumes. Just over 100 arrivals have so far been reported, says Republican journalist Franchuiz Steinberg. But resuming a business is inspiring. So Steffi Balsa of the Algemeine Zeitung spoke to Polis Ndeutapo. My name is Paulus. I'm working for the Utapo Tours and Safaris. And since the pandemic, this is my first tour since the pandemic started. So I feel happy today. Uh, tourism is, my, is a source of my happiness. I'm always happy. So this is a good day for me today. Thank you. Entrepreneurship is key to keeping the economy going in difficult and good times. Monique Adams of our MyZone team visited Kasi Berger in Vintuk. Do take a look. Yeah, my name is Elias, AKS uh, Mashaba. Yeah, I'm the owner of Kasi Berger. Yeah, we started Kasi Berger like from scratch. We didn't know what we were doing, like we just wanted money to like to satisfy our basic needs. Yeah, but now Casibega like, brought us to, uh, into something we didn't know what we were doing. Uh, yeah, as you know about the pandemic, it affected us like, negatively. Because of the quarantine that they gave you, it's been 
like get time to satisfy our customers we have to close our early and staffs so that really affected us and then like also affected that affected our turnover like we didn't make uh, enough money through uh, because of the pandemic but hopefully uh, everything is gonna get the right and uh, we're gonna get our business on stance again to uh, expand it and stuff yeah Take a spice, then we take a sauce. Yeah, then we take a sauce. I'm sorry. Tomato and onion and green pepper. Then we put it in the middle of the like this then put a can a little bit of spice <laughs> yeah 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 okay let's see almost almost okay So here is a look at today's front pages in Namibia's print media. Namibian Sun pursues yet another angle on government's recently failed fishing quota auction and also reports on the bail application of an ambulance driver who allegedly raped a 15-year-old girl during her time in isolation because of COVID-19. Republican and the Namibian reports that Air Namibia will oppose the liquidation application lodged against the carrier, while the Afrikaans Daily also says a driver who allegedly killed a cyclist on the Western Bypass in Ventuk will still be prosecuted. In German, today's Allgemeine Zeitung leads with the same story. Polis Kambata remains free on bail on culpable homicide and other charges relating to the death of late Ingrid Schultz. The Namibian second lead reports on the liquidation of a well-known construction company, while New Era shares some inspiration with a story about a woman's journey to qualify herself as a nurse in spite of odds being stacked against her. Now let's zoom in on some of the stories on the daily newspaper's inside pages. In Market Watch, you can read about retail and construction's latest performance in terms of job creation, wages and labor costs. And every vehicle needs good wheels, and tires are the topic of the bi-weekly issue of My.NA Cars, which also looks at RT recycling possibilities. Read in Namibian Sun about progress to find a new boss for Fish Co. after the fish rot scandal. In theory, Mike Gipunya remains on the company's payroll. According to Republican, opposition parties and political analysts are critical of the fact that the Electoral Commission could not yet provide full details on supplementary voter registration more than three weeks after this process were concluded. The SBCA in Swakopmund this year celebrates 50 years of protecting men and women's best friends. Read more in the Allgemeine Zeitung. And when there is a will, a way can be found. The Namibian tells the sad but positive story of a 14-year-old orphan who pays for his own rent and school fees. Today's New Era reports that the Ongwediva Town Council will slash certain tariffs with 60% after some residents were mistakenly slapped with bills that increased with 80% or even doubled. 
And on that note, do have a lovely Wednesday and a restful evening before the second half of the week kicks off. I've been your host, Pris Gagnolo. Thank you so much for joining us here at NMH at 1. And as usual, we play out with a snapshot of today and tomorrow's weather. Goodbye.